Likewise, some of these names you'll see as new names. You've actually got five new appointments. One, Professor uh, Alan Marshall, who's found the uh, G. Okay. Now, your project specification, the original deadline for project specification is tomorrow. <coughs> However, I'm going to give you a one week extension for the project specification. So, the new deadline for the project specification will be next Wednesday, the 9th of October. Okay? You should complete it with your project supervisor. You should complete it with your project supervisor. And in the specification, you have to give details of tasks, milestones, and deliverables. A task is an activity which you have to accomplish within a defined period of time. Okay? That's a task. A milestone is an event which has happened once. A milestone is a point in time and it indicates your progress towards your final goal, towards your outcome. And then a deliverable is the result of your project. A deliverable is the result of the project. Okay, so that's one thing you've got to do in the next week. Seats over that side, if you want to go over that side. Or maybe if people move away from the aisles, so that people in. Okay, project presentation. It's a bit early for the project presentation, but we've put them on early because, incidentally, I will put these slides on Viking for you if you're worried about writing everything down, or oh, they will be on Viking. Um, not with all the pictures necessarily, but. Um, We've had to move the project presentation forward because we're not going to be able to get into. We're going to move in and let these guys sit down somewhere, even though they are eight minutes late. Yeah. Go on. Okay. So, project presentation is early this year because we have we're not going to get into that over two weeks yet. Presentation, you should be thinking about including background theory, project planning, a literature review, a market survey. It might not be appropriate for some of you, a market survey, but it might be appropriate for others. Talk to your project supervisor. And also, if you've got a project which you can be doing on your laptop, it doesn't require any space in the fourth floor. Laboratories, you can also report on any progress that you've made in your project. Okay? Okay, this is the timetable for the project. So I'm not sure if you can see all of that. The font is too small. Anyway, we'll come on to why the font is too small in a bit. But I'll put this onto Bible as well. So each band, and we go. Band A at the top, band J at the bottom. Each band is assigned a certain number of slots. <coughs> next week, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, and Tuesday and Wednesday of the following week. So that's the 7th and 8th, and the 14th and 15th of October. So Somebody, an academic member of staff, a professor or a lecturer from your fan will send you a detailed timetable of exactly when you need to attend for your presentation. Okay, so you should be expecting that. I'll also put the, I'll also put the detailed timetables up on like as well. Okay. All right. The majority of the majority of the rest of today, I want to talk about how to give either a good presentation or a bad presentation. So you're looking at producing a presentation on PowerPoint. You get a question, Daniel. So how much does the presentation last? That's a good question. 
Uh, look it up in the module document. Uh, well, actually, the presentation I gave back in April, look at those slides and it will be on there. It's something like that, yeah. But it does count. It will count for the overall marks of your um, project. Okay? So, it needs to be a good presentation. You need to get a good mark. How do you give a good presentation? Well, first of all, you've got to keep on time. Ten minutes is the allocation <coughs> time, and then you should expect a further five minutes for questions. I guess most of you have never given a presentation before, so do practice, and do, when you're practicing, use a watch to keep the time, and also, don't just read it in your head, but actually say the words out loud, because you can get do it in a, in a different speed, depending on which of those you do. Approximately one minute per slide, therefore about ten slides, <laughs> approximately. Not all slides, take the same length of time. Talk to the audience, don't talk to the screen. Okay? And don't read out your slide verbatim, <coughs> word for word. Okay? So, you decide on this next slide, good or bad. Okay. Your presentation should last for 10 minutes and you should allow for 5 minutes for questions from the audience. Before the presentation, try practicing by talking out loud with a time or sample. You should allow approximately 60 seconds for each slide, so the complete presentation should comprise approximately 10 slides. Note that some slides may be projected on the screen for a longer time than compared to other slides. That is, not all slides hit the same time. You should start to face the audience. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay. And engage directly with them. Okay? Okay. Do not look at the projector screen with your back to the audience. Okay. Do not read the slide word for word. Yeah? Which is what I've just done. And don't put too much text on one slide. Okay? Your audience will not read text and listen to you at the same time. So if you put lots of text on a slide, they're not going to read it. So is this a good slide or a bad slide? Yeah. Bad. Definitely a bad slide. Okay. <laughs> good or bad? We got it. Okay. So you want good contrast between the text and the background. So that's exactly the same slide as the one before. So these are fancy backgrounds that you get from Microsoft PowerPoint. By all means, use them if you wish to, but I never use them because they're just, they're not part of your presentation really. Okay, it's just window dressing. So you can use black text on a white background, that's good. You can use black on a off-white background. Sometimes some people prefer that. Some people prefer an off-white background. And this one is dark blue on a white background. Again, some people prefer that as well. It's easier to read. It's up to you. It's up to you. Font size. Okay. What font size are you going to use? How about that? <laughs> that's uh, font size 10. Anybody? <coughs> anybody, gonna, anybody think that's okay? <laughs> 11? 12? 14? 16? Go for 60. 
Depends, maybe. Depends, all right. 18. Is 18 good enough? Good. 20? No. 24? Yeah. 28? Okay. I like to use about 24. Personally, my slides are mostly at 26, actually, for some strange reason. Uh, but uh, 24, 24, 28, normally. 20 is okay, 18 is okay, I wouldn't go below 18. Oh, okay, what about graphs? Do you like this graph? Good or bad? Why? Go on, go on. So, no labels, yeah, that's one thing. No <laughs> title, good. Caption, okay, caption. Let's say, okay, that's a caption. Caption. Uh, what about the size of the numbers? The grid. Uh, you can have a grid on all, actually. I don't know if it's a grid. I'm not too worried about the other grid on all. What about the size of the numbers? Good or bad? Happy that it's far too small. Okay. So. The scale values on the axis may be big enough so that you can read. Label the axis. It's amazing how many people get this wrong. A lot of people get this wrong. And I tell you, actually, the small, if you're using MATLAB, especially people who use MATLAB, have tiny, tiny um, numbers that nobody can read. Interesting. If you do a caption or you label the curves, okay, if there's more than one curve, so you have some sort of caption or you label the curves. <coughs> a title, excess noise factor versus avalanche multiplication from a McIntyre theory. That's the title. Okay, where did I get this from? Well, what is K? So you want a caption to say what is K? You know that the axes are multiplication, excess noise factor, what is K? So you put something in there about the, the variable K. And did you do this? Did I do it? Who, who produced this curve? Sets a curve? Well, there's a guy called Robert McIntyre in 1966. So if it's not your work, you put a reference. So there's the reference. R.J. McIntyre, IEEE Transactions on Electron Devices, <coughs> volume number, page number, moment here. Okay? Every time you use somebody else's work in a report or in a presentation, you must, must reference it. Okay? <coughs> okay, and that's that. Uh, you can make it look pretty if you like, but that's the same. It's the same as the one before. It's just a bit prettier. Okay, what about, actually, on that diagram, that uh, graph before, there are no units. There are no units. They're just straight values. However, most graphs will also require units. So of these three, sorry, at least four graphs. <coughs> what's wrong? What's wrong with the one in the top left hand corner? Wrong. Okay. Is that bad? Okay. What about the bottom left and the top right? Good or bad? Bad? They've both got units. One is included with the scale value. One is included. 
on the axis, the label on the axis. Both of those are acceptable. All right. What about the one on the bottom right? The one doesn't have a unit. It should have a unit. Even if it's one, it still should have a unit. Okay? So, what about this graph? This is a slide. I've seen people do this. I've seen people present slides like this. And it's a kind of way of making you look really clever. Right? But actually, it makes you look really stupid. So, avoid too many equations on one side. What about cut and paste? A lot of people get into lots of difficulty with cut and paste. So here we are, we've got a nice graph, nice colours on the graph. Any idea what the graph's about? No, no idea whatsoever, you can't be it. And simply, I did this this morning, I got a PDF, I did a screen capture, and I put this into Microsoft Paint, and I pulled this out of Microsoft Paint. So you can easily <coughs> distort images, and you want to avoid doing that. It's the same one. If you're using cut and paste, almost certainly it's not your work. So again, if it's not your work and you're using cut and paste, then you must reference where you got that from. Okay? So here we've got a reference on the bottom. So the reference, you can read the reference. Alright? So. Very good paper, is that? You're going to read it. Okay. Have I given you some tips on how to give a good presentation? All right. Some of the things you want to avoid. So, next thing I want to talk about is peer marking. I want you guys to mark your friends. Mm -hmm. And not just your friends, anybody. Okay? So, the project presentation will be marked by two members of academic staff, Professor Fletcher. Okay? One of them should be your project supervisor, the other one we call the assessor, the project assessor. So those two people will mark your presentation. However, I'm also going to give you 5% bonus if you do peer marking of at least five of your fellow students. So what I'm going to do is basically give you the same marking form that will be used by Professor Ralph or me or anyone. So you're going to get the same marking form. It'll be slightly different, but essentially the same. And I want you to complete at least five of those. Can you stay after your CV or presentation? Hang around? Absolutely. And then the next five. Yeah, absolutely. What you should do, the time slot that you are allocated to, you should be there in the whole of the time slot. So you should be listening to other people's presentation, and other people, other students, will listen to your presentation. So you provide an audience for yourselves, okay? So you're not only doing the presentation, you're also providing an audience. Right? Okay. And whilst you're there, I want you to do the peer marking. The peer marking will be what we call formative. Formative is just the posh education type word, which means we're not actually going to use the marks. So your marks are not going to depend upon the marks that another student gives you. The marks will be based upon only the project supervisor and the project assessor. However, the marks that other students give to you are going to help you learn 
not just from the mark, but also from the comments they make. So it's a, it's a learning process that's going to help you give a better presentation in the future. Now, okay. it's a mark, I'll put the marking specification, I'll put the form and the marking specification of, on vital. So it will be on vital before you start doing the PMR. You have, you have to print it out. In fact, I think because it's going to be five mark sheets for every student, that's going to be over a thousand mark sheets. So that's a lot of trees. So I'm actually thinking, I'm not sure whether I want to give you paper copy or whether I want to ask you to scan it and put it in through a uh, vital drop box. I might do that, I might not. I'm not sure yet. But I'll let you know. Now, one thing to note about peer marking is that it is not, on this occasion, it cannot be anonymous. It cannot be anonymous. So the students that you give a mark to will know what mark you've given and they will know what comments you've made. So bear that in mind, okay? Bear that in mind. Don't be rude about people, necessarily. Okay. <coughs> so that's peer marking. Another important thing that you should be doing early in the project, an early thing to do in the project, is the literature review. Literature review is where you go and look for articles in either academic literature or technical literature which are appropriate for your project. And you might discover that your project has already been done by somebody else. Or you will get good papers, we call the articles papers, that will give you some good ideas about how to do your project. So everybody no matter what your project is about, must do a good literature review. The subject libra librarian, which is Zelda, Zelda Chatton, she will be offering master classes on how to do a literature review. I haven't got them typed in yet, but they will be in the very near future. She's not going to do it for 330 students at one time. So, I think she might do it for 50 or 60 students in one go. So it will be sign up for a literature review masterclass with Zelda. Sign up, first come, first serve. And if it's oversubscribed, she'll offer it again for other people to do. Okay? But that's good. Good thing to do. So make sure you take up that opportunity. <coughs> I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'll, as, as soon as I've got the, the arrangements sorted out, I'll let everyone know the email. Okay? So nobody will be advantaged or disadvantaged in that respect. Okay. Finally. Just to say, your modules are like 340, are like 440. They're 30 credit modules. That means that 25% of the marks for this year of study. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. You need to get a good mark in order to get a good degree classification. The university system says that one credit is equal to 10 hours of your time. So 30 credits means it's 300 hours of your time. Now, if we're talking about 22 weeks, so if you will finish in about week 10 of semester 2, 22 weeks, you're looking at over 13 and a half hours per week. Per week, 13 and a half hours per week. As you can see in your orbit timetable, it's timetable. Do we want to do this? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I should have sent it around earlier. No, no, no. So. 
Um, you can see in your orbit timetable, you've got timetable slots on Tuesday. Some of you have got clashes in that time, you know, in those timetable slots. You've got at most seven hours on a Tuesday timetable. Subtract out the clashes as well. So seven hours is less than 32 and a half hours. So you need to be doing a lot of time in your outside of the timetable hours in order to complete a good project. Yeah? Last thing, enjoy your project. Enjoy it. Okay. Any last questions? Thank you. 